Um, Senator Budd, are you ready? Uh, yes, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Budd. So again, welcome back. Good to see you again. Um, and thank you, Chair. Uh, you know, the most important job of the FAA is to ensure aviation safety. The Aircraft Certification Safety and Accountability Act and this hearing are squarely focused on the FAA's aircraft certification process. It's unfortunate uh, that the nominee, Phil Washington, uh, could not answer my questions about the FAA certification process. I was shocked that the candidate to lead the FAA didn't know the FAA's three aircraft certification requirements. Mr. Nolan, as you know, one motivating factor behind the certification reform bill was that FAA's employees had insufficient knowledge of the 737 MAX's complex MCAS, or Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, which led to tragic crashes. In both instances, pilots were unable to overpower the MCAS's or erroneous control inputs. A DOT special committee that evaluated this incident recommended the FAA reevaluate its workforce strategy for aircraft certification to better adapt to industry changes. The bill, which is the subject of today's hearing, authorized $75 million over three years for the FAA to recruit and retain qualified engineers, safety inspectors, and software technical experts. The point was to increase FAA's ability to understand ever more complex technical innovations during the certification process. So, Mr. Nolan, what is the status of the FAA's recruitment efforts, if you would, please? Well, thank you, Senator Budd, for the question. Uh, let me just say, uh, if you walk the halls of the FAA, you'll see that there have been 18 administrators and four actors, so a total of 22, and they have all brought various degrees of expertise. Again, I'll just say I fully support Phil Washington. He will step in and he will be, be in a very effective a, a executive and the agency will absolutely support him in every regard. We've done a lot of work in the area of how we continue to train and how we to continue. We are working to complete a comprehensive review of our senior, senior technical experts uh, program. We are also working our, our chief scientists and technical advisors. We brought on more on board. We've got 14 senior scientists, chief scientists and technical advisors. We've got another four technical experts that we have on staff. So we continue to, to look into this area. But at the same time, we want to make sure we're just not solving for yesterday. We, we recognize that as technology evolved, and especially with all the new novel entrants coming into the market, that we need those requisite skill sets as well. So that's a piece of work we've done. We're very appreciative of the funds we received. It has helped us get to where we need to be. We are on step with our hiring this year, and we expect to continue uh, in that regard. Thank you for that. Now, back in December of 2020, this committee released a report finding that FAA inspectors tasked with reviewing operational training requirements for the 737 MAX were insufficiently qualified. The aircraft certification bill requires airline pilots to be more involved at the design stage for new and, re and refreshed aircraft models. So how has the FAA increased pilot participation in operational evaluations for aircraft that are awaiting certification? Well, we've done a couple of things in that regard. So with respect to the MAX, we use, we use pilots from uh, around the world. We, use, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have just test pilots, but we use active line pilots with varying degrees of skill and expertise, if you will, to ensure that, number one, we've got the assumptions right. We're also using test pilots as we look to those that are in certification now, the, the MAX 7, the MAX 10, as well as the 777-9. Um, so we will continue to do that. And at the same time, we're working to make sure that our own test pilots have the requisite skills that they need to for these, you know, as we get into more complex technology, if you will. Thank you. And uh, one more question with time I have remaining. The bill discussed today uh, directed the FAA to issue many new regulations and reports. If we go back to the 2018, the 2016, and the 2012 reauthorizations, uh, they had numerous requirements for new regulations and reports, a significant number which have not been uh, completed. In the case of the 2012 reauthorization, industry has been waiting for nearly 11 years for some new regs to come out of that. So what's causing these delays, particularly with these new regs? Well, uh, well, thank you for the question, uh, Senator Buck. If you look, there's a piece, there's a clause that says, you know, certainly we have to work through the Administrative Procedures Act. It is a very 
I don't want to use the word laborious, but I say you've you just got to work fair. through that. And it's and part of that is by design to make sure we just aren't flippantly sort of putting new regulation out there. So we are methodical. We're required to do cost benefit analysis. We're required to put it out. We first start with a notice of proposed rulemaking. We put that out for comments. We adjudicate the comments. We work back through different parts of government, it's from the agency to the department to OIRA to OMB. And that's the process we go through to be able to turn it into a final rule. We certainly, across the agency and the department, we continue to look for ways that we can streamline our own internal processes to make sure that we're faster speed to market. But it is indeed a deliberative process. Uh, but certainly, we are giving it all the attention and, and priority that it deserves. Thank you. And again, thank you for being here. Uh, Chair, I yield back. 